So can anybody tell me what a data structure is? Can anybody tell me any data structures that you've already been exposed to? Stacks. Uh, Stacks. Lists, lists and dictionaries. Lists, like arrays, lists, dictionaries, objects, or uh, hashes, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, stacks, lists, dictionaries. Q. Q. Have we built any custom data structures? Just in general. Is the, is the binary tree a custom data structure? Well, I wouldn't say it's a custom data structure. It's a very common data structure. Um, but like, do you remember when we were talking about object-oriented programming and we had like app users and, or like we did like the dog class and animal class? Anyone remember that? I know it went back like a few weeks. Those were custom data structures. Like, so that like we had, a, we created a dog data structure um, that operated in a very specific way. Now, there really isn't much use case for a dog data structure outside of the realms of how we were lecturing, talking about it. But um, data structures are very common. Um, we're gonna talk about common data structures uh, that you'll see, and you might even be quizzed on. Um, they might come up in challenges occasionally as far as like how to solve a specific problem. But these are some common data structures. Um, I like this quote from, uh, the author of Python, it's easy to make mistakes or it's easy to make mistakes that only come out much later after you've already implemented a lot of code. You'll, you'll realize, oh, I should have used a different type of data structure. So you essentially scrap, like scrap all your code and you're like, oh, I'm going to start over. So that can be thinking about like, all right, some of the challenges that we've done, like maybe like boggle. It's like, what kind of data structure should we store the table in? And it was like an array or an array of lists like a nested array. Some people stored it as a dictionary. So those are some like decisions that people have made of like, what kind of data structure should I use to store this information in before you even like started coding. So think about this is where like planning comes in before you even write a, a, like a single line of code is like what type of data structure or even just like what, this is where like pseudo coding comes in. It's like what data structure or what, logic should I use to solve this problem? And in doing that, you'll try to come up with the, the appropriate data structure. Um, so just overview of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, what is a data structure? Why are data structures important? Data structure examples. We're gonna talk about a little more advanced data structure called a linked list. Um, and we'll, what are linked lists? And I'll code a linked list out live. I'll also do a stack and a queue as well, just to show you kind of what that data structure looks like. So any questions, what questions do you have about what we'll talk about today? All right. So what are data structures? <clears throat> so a data structure is essentially just a collection of data values and the relationship between those values and how those operations or functions or methods can be applied to the data. So just like we we're doing object-oriented programming, we had like very specific methods that can be applied to the dog class, the user class. Same thing here, data structures, we have data and the specific operations that can be applied to that data that essentially says how this data can interact with one another, how those values can interact with one another. But long story short, it's essentially the way you organize your data. Any questions? No side. Um, All right. <clears throat> so why are data structures important? So using the right data structure can help your software run more efficiently. So when you talk about space and time complexity or whatever, whatever is most important to you. Um, it can help you manipulate or change your data more efficiently. Uh, it can help you scale your application. So maybe your application is, um, isn't that scalable in that like, hey, I wanna you know, 
add something to a list or add some data. It might be easy to do that once, but try to do that a thousand times, a million times, you know, a billion times. Like, does it scale as the number of operations increase? And at the end of the day, it makes you become a better software engineer. The more data structures you're familiar with, the more tools in your toolkit you can use to solve different problems. So at the end of the day, it makes you a better engineer and it can also just make your software more efficient. Questions on why are data structures important? All right, so different types of data structures that we've already kind of been exposed to. So first on the left, we have date, different data types such as strings, numbers, arrays, lists. Those are also data structures. Um, objects or dictionaries, Booleans, null, none, undefined. So these are specific data types specifically for JavaScript or Python. Um, does anybody know like the on and off symbol? Like the power or the power button. Oh, have you ever? Does anybody know? Recognize this as the as the power button. Do you know what it actually symbolizes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One and zero. One and zero. True or false. On and off. So one o, oh, one being true, zero being false. So on off. Kind of interesting that probably software, some software engineer probably had an influence on what the power button symbol looked like. Um, on the right-hand side, we have different types of data structures that you may um, come in just that are out there. And so array lists that we should be pretty familiar with, objects or dictionaries. We already talked about stacks. We talked about queues before. Uh, there's linked lists. Pretty much like linked lists and below, this is where things get a little more complex. The data structure gets a little more complex. Um, so we have linked lists, doubly linked lists, binary trees, binary search trees, uh, just regular trees. It's so binary trees, there's two leaves or two nodes off the head node um, and off, off each branch where trees can essentially have as many nodes as they want, it just depends on the data structure. Uh, of that tree. There's hash tables, there's tries, there's min and max heaps, and there's a, there's plenty, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch more. Um, but generally, these are very common data structures that you might see at some point um, in your um, additional learnings about data structures. Questions about data structures, these types. We don't expect you to know what any of these are right now, really, except maybe for arrays and objects or lists and dictionaries. All right, <clears throat> we're going to go into stacks and queues. So if you remember stacks last in, first out. So think of a stack right here. We have like index zero, index one, index two, index three. If we insert one, the one on the top, so it thinks of pancakes, stack one, two, three, four. And then when we remove them, it removes them from the top or the last one that comes in will also be the first one to come out. So we have insert and remove. So with stacks, this is the only thing when you insert items to a stack, it can only go to essentially the end of the array. And when you remove them, you, it can only remove from the end of the array. There's no, so that's like how it operates. Those are like the methods that can be performed on them and the operations that can be performed on them. Within a stack, you can't say like insert at, at index four or something like that, or, in, or insert some value in the middle of the stack. That's not how stacks work. That would be a completely different data structure. Um, stacks specifically operate in a last in first out uh, way. <clears throat> Similar to stacks, queues is a first in, first out. You know, you're standing in line at the roller coaster. Um, first in, first out. So we insert it at the end of the line where we in queue. So we insert. And when we remove, we remove from the top or like the front of the line, which is DQ. So stack, last in, first out. Queues, first in, first out. 
And then we get into linked lists, which kind of look a little bit differently than stacks and queues just from this visual representation of it. Uh, but before I move on to linked lists, any questions about stacks and queues? So actually, before I jump into linked lists, let's go ahead and code up a stack and a queue. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm in my directory called data structures. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. And so I'm going to create a file called stack.py and q.py. And I'm going to code a stack data structure. So a stack data structure consists of, so what, um, I guess like what should, how should we store the values of a stack? An array. An array. Tuple. I heard tuple, an array. Um, can we? I've never seen it stored in a tuple. I don't know why we couldn't store it in a tuple, but typically um, they're stored in an array. So if I were going to create a data structure or a data structure, a stack data structure, I'm going to create a stack class. <clears throat> And just like with every, now we're again doing OOP, I'm gonna init self, and I'm not gonna add anything here, um, but it's gonna be initialized by default with an empty array, because we're gonna start storing our values in an array. And what two, op at least at a minimum, what two operations do we need in order, in order to build a stack. Add and remove or pop. Yep, so we can add and remove or push pop, um, whatever uh, you kind of want. So if we wanted to insert into an array, which goes to, to the end of the array, I guess, I'm gonna create a method called push. Uh, and this push is going to um, add some value here. So if I wanted to add a value to my array, my base array, how would I do that using this push method? A pin. Yep, so I can do self.base.append value. If I want to create a new stack, stack like so, and I'm gonna print stack, just so we can kind of see that. I'm gonna run Python stack. I get my stack object, and that's my stack data structure. So now I want to append or push some value like uh, three. Whoop, why did that happen? And now I can print stack dot um, base just because I want to see what that base looks like. So I'm going to clear the terminal. So here I instantiated a new stack instance on line 10, and now I'm pushing the number three into the stack. So push takes in a value. I take my base array, self.base, and I'm appending this value. Three, that's what's going on right here on line 11. And then I'm just printing the base just to see if I can see what it looks like. So there is my stack currently. So if I wanted to add a bunch of values in there, uh, three, one, 
four, seven, clear it. Uh, I guess I couldn't, don't need this print. Let's clear that. So now here is my stack, three, one, four, seven. So I'm at one every time I insert, I insert it to the end of the array. What questions do you have about the push method? That allows me to insert a value into my stack. Oh. <clears throat> and what's the other method that we can use? That we need pop. Pop. Now, what does pop do? It removes the last, off the last one added. Yep. Self. Oh, go ahead. I guess it also returns the value if you want it to. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. So let's let's see. Let's let's pop it off and return it. I'm guessing. So. Um. So with that, I can say like uh, element uh, self dot base dot pop uh, return element. Is pop the built-in method to return or remove the value at the end of the array? Uh, I don't think for Python that nope. returns a value. It doesn't return a value? I don't think so. All right, let's check it. Pop Python. All right, then this will blah, blah, blah. Moves the item at the given end of the list and returns the removed item. So I think we'll try it out. Um, so it looks like here, pop two. I don't know why it did that. Let's just try it. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll check it out. So here, I'm gonna do stack.pop because, well, not poop, pop. And I'm gonna print the base stack again. Clear. All right, and I, I guess if I print this, it might return seven. Okay. So these at a minimum are needed for a stack. For this, for how the stack operates. You can also say like, well, I wanna just quickly return like def length of stack and I can just return length self.base. Like if I wanted to, and you can add methods in here that do specific things, um, but typically like maybe you just wanna find the length of the stack or um, def like peak is like, all right, I wanna know what the value, what's the next value that might be removed when I pop it off. So I can self.base negative one, that will return, uh, I guess it'll return the value at the end of the array. So I can also print stack, that length of stack, if I do that, See here, I get three for the length of the stack. I'm gonna clear the terminal, run that again. So I get three for the length of the stack after I pop off seven. I can also print stack that peak because I wanna like peek into the stack to see what that next value is. And that value is four. So four is gonna be the next value that comes off. And here I'm just like, I just wanna see what the next value is. So questions on a stack. <clears throat> so this is the only way kind of like a stack can operate. Like last in, first out. 
Wait. All right. So if I want to do the same thing, With a Q, if I wanted to make a Q operate in a first in, first out, let's see how we can do that. <clears throat> so if I kind of wanted to emulate a stack, but just have it instead of, I could push into it, instead of um, popping off the back of it, I can, um, pop off or remove it from the first first one. So I can do the class Q. I can deft under init. Self dot base equals what data structure would be most appropriate to store a um, <clears throat> And a rate. Yep. Again, very similar to a stack. It just operates a little bit differently. So def, if I want to insert, so NQ, E-N-Q-U-E. Is that how I say it? Is that how you say it? Yep. Self.value. So how should this one work? So NQ is you're adding two. So insert. So insert. Is that the, uh, is that the method? Yes. All right. And self dot insert, whoop, not base dot insert value. So if I wanted to create a collect queue, queue, and I wanted a queue dot nq, do three, um, one, four, seven. And I just wanted to print the queue dot base. I clear the terminal. If I do Python Q. Uh oh, what did I do? You gotta tell it insert. Yeah, I start in the end for the uh, insert. Say it one more time. It requires two arguments to start. Insert does. Let's see. Insert Python. Ah, uh, vowel, so the array insert, huh? Is there a way to just insert it at the beginning or the end of the array? I guess I can do it just like I do here. You should put zero first. I'm just gonna do append. Because appending it, I'm gonna append it to the end of the array, just like I do here. Three one four seven, and then def dq self. How do I remove from? Pop will work still. Pop and then index zero. <clears throat> I could do that, um, but is there a way to remove from beginning of array Python, or is it just pop? It's. I think it's just pop. And index zero. Yes. Base dot pop, index zero like so. Yes, and to clarify, the insert is being able to insert something at any given. The reason it takes two arguments is so you can insert your value into a particular position. Okay. <clears throat> so. Yeah. So we we could hard code that, but append does the same thing. Um, so yeah, like insert. If I wanted to insert it some value at any index, 
I can, or I can just do like negative one at the end of it, but I always want to insert it at the end. So I'm just going to use append. So if I wanted to pop, um, so Q dot DQ and then print the base. So since three was the first one to go in, three should be the first one to come out when I DQ it. So my remaining base array should be one, four, seven. There we go. If I did that twice, it should just be four, seven. Great. Um, I can also, just like I did here, length of the stack, or I can just say like size. I'll do size, def size of the, the Q. Uh, return self dot base length so I can return uh, q dot size and that should be two now if I clear it and last I can peek into it so I want to peek at what's the next value to be enqueued or dequeued from uh, the, the queue. So it should be self.base, I guess at index zero. So it should be four. Whoop. Print q dot peak. And that's four right there. So that's how you implement a queue and a stack. <clears throat> um, and with that, let's go ahead and... All right, so we've just done stacks and queues. Now let's actually talk about linked lists. So as you can see, a stack and a queue, we just essentially represent them using arrays or lists to interact with, um, with a stack and queue. But linked lists are a little bit different. So linked lists, um, we have a head node and a node consists of a value and a pointer to a next node. I don't think, I don't know if you remember from last week that the binary trees, trees where we had a head node and a left and right node. Linked lists just have a next node. So, when we create a linked list, we just have a head node that has some data or some value, and then a next node value, which points to the next node, which consists of another some value and also another pointer to another node. Questions about linked lists, just kind of how we have like a pointer and all that. Nope. All right. So we've been talking about stacks, queues, and linked lists, but like, like why do linked lists even exist in the first place? So data structures in general, we, they, they don't just, someone didn't just create them just for what, for whatever reason, there's a specific reason, whether it's like, all right, well, we need to efficiently search through, um, this data. So let's put it in a specific data structure that looks that it's like optimized for searching or some other value or for some other reason. Where linked lists specifically were created because of a problem <clears throat> way back in the day in like the 70s or whatever, in the 80s, where RAM or memory was constrained. So we, we have, we had limited RAM, random access memory. This is the memory that's like running your, your browser and keeps all your tabs open and all that. Um, and when you have low RAM, your, your machine starts to slow down. Um, but way back when, when memory was constrained, software engineers, computer scientists had to be very, um, very cognizant of how they managed the data when they, when it's inserted into RAM. So for a problem that we had, for example, say we had a list of four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, and we have to store that into RAM. 
in our in our memory on our computer and it stores this array into a specific location in memory that's represented by 472869 and all those are stored right next to one another so each yellow block represents think of it as an address like at in a neighborhood or somewhere like each one is a house and for this array to work we have to store each value right next to one another so four seven two eight six nine and they have to be right next to each other because it's an array and then so now we push um so in this array let's say we declare a variable called five but we push the number one or yeah let's say we declare a variable five in the array or i'm sorry just declare a random variable with the number five we have to store that into memory and the computer just so happens to store the number five right next to where the array one is stored and we also happen to right after we initialize or uh, declare a variable want to push the number one into the array so we declare variable five five gets stored into into ram right next to where the array currently is but then we also want to push the number one into this array but we can't necessarily push the number one into the array because five occupies the address right next to where the array is declared or stored in memory so what would have to happen the computer would have to wipe where the array initially was because it doesn't have room for the number one and reallocate another portion of memory for the now bigger array any questions on that so now when we push the number one we have four seven two eight six nine one so great so this time it worked but what happened what would happen if we um declared the array and then declared several variables that five three eight two and there it stores those variables in memory in these memory locations five three eight two and it's called random access memory because the the variables or the um things are stored just randomly in memory it's not all stored sequentially from the very beginning of the the memory to the end it just stores it randomly where it's available so if we happen to if this represents our entire ram availability and we declare this initial array of four seven two eight six nine but then we declare these variables five three eight two and then we also want to push one into the array again there's not room for this new array to be stored in ram so it becomes an error so there's not enough ram where we can store four seven two eight six nine one so we get an error it's saying like hey no more memory available can't store this and your system freezes or crashes so that's why linked lists were created. So let's convert this list of 4728691 into a linked list. So for example, we also st we still have these variables 5382 declared, but we converted this array to a linked list. So 4 is the head node right here, and when we insert 7 into the linked list, this four, so four is the value, and then the next node will be seven, and it's pointing to another memory location in memory. Just so happens that it stored it here. And then seven, the next node is two, and two is stored somewhere randomly in this um, location. So two, is it's happening. Yep. Is the first number in the array always the head? Yes. Well, in, in this scenario, yes. Like four is represented by the head node. So two gets put right here, just happened to be right here. Two's next node is eight, which happens to be stored here. Eight's next node is six, which happens to be stored over here. 
six next node is nine, which happens to be stored right next to seven in memory. And then nine's next node is one, which happens to be stored right here. And then the last element in the linked list one does not have a next node, so it doesn't have a next node. So in this scenario, we're able to convert this array to a linked list and still have enough memory in our machine to actually continue working. It's not gonna throw any errors. Questions about linked lists? Okay, uh, to build off what I asked earlier about the first number being the head. So you said yes, because that's what it was on here. So yep. if we wanted to, we could make any one of those numbers the head? Yes, but it would be a totally, it wouldn't represent this array, essentially. Gotcha. Yep. Now there are, of course, we solve this problem, but there are trade-offs. Like with a list, we can access an index directly. We can access index three is zero, one, two, three by doing array one at index three, and we can immediately grab eight. And that's like um, constant time to grab that value. Where link lists, we have to do a little bit of searching. We can't start, we can't just immediately go to index eight or index three in a link list because it's not an array, it's a linked list. So let's actually code out a linked list data structure. So clear. I'm gonna touch link list.py. All right. So with linked lists, we'll create class linked list dunder init self oh i'm sorry self and here what what's the one value we have in a linked list where does it start index 0 no cuz it's not an array like the so, head node. The head. Yep, exactly. Yep, it's the head node. So I'm going to say self dot head equals none initially, or I can say like head, and if I want to, I can say like head equals none as a because I could maybe instantiate a new link list while directly passing in a node. So with that. How do we create a node? Class node self uh, so def dunder init self dot value self dot data or self dot value equals value and self dot next equals none initially. And I'll actually say like next node. I can say like value equals none and next node equals none. So you don't have to do this. I could literally just, I don't need a next node here. Um, but so the initial default values are none. So this is my individual node, which consists of a value, like four, and then a next node. Is right. there no left and right? Nope, because this is a this is a linked list. We're, left and rights are binary trees. It's a different type of data structure. So linked list, think of it as a linked list as a. I don't want to say think of it as an array, but yeah, like you have four. The next one is seven, the next one is two, the next one is eight, next one is six, the next one is nine, the next one is two, but it's not an array. So there's a couple of methods I can add, or I need to, um, for to create a linked list. What are, what are a couple of them? A pen. A pen or add, so def add. 
So add self, some data or value. So this is where adding to a linked list, it's not just like append it to the end because we start, we always start at the head node and we have to traverse the entire link list until we get to a node that doesn't have a next node value. So we have to run some logic on here. The first thing we need to do is create a new node. So I'm gonna say new node equals node and pass in that value. So this creates a new node, which is this. Now we can check, hey, if the head node is none, I mean, there isn't a head node yet, that means that's the very first value that's being passed into the linked list. So we can say if self.head equals none, self.head equals new node. Let's just test this. So uh, link list one, I'll just call it link list LL, create a new link list, and I'm gonna print LL That's for link list. And I'm gonna print, I'm sorry, Python link list. So we got our link list data structure right here. If I wanted to see the head, I can do head like that and run that. And the initial value is none. So it does not have a head node yet. So it's an empty linked list. But if I wanted to add a, add a value such as um, add like four, seven. So I'm gonna add four like so. And then I'm gonna print the link list dot head. So what's, what is the head currently? Or what's, when I add four, what is head? What's it gonna, what's it gonna look like? When the I print node is a value of four. I'm sorry? It'll be a class, so it'll be a node class. Yep, it's gonna be a node class with a value of four. So if I Python link list, I get my node object. So that's my first, that's my head node. And I can check the value by just doing value and it's four. <clears throat> but if I wanted to add another one, um, four, seven. So if four is already the head node, so it comes, so I already added four. Now I'm adding seven. So I'm creating a new node with a value of seven. If self.head node is none, which it's not none because four is there, then else I need to continue to traverse down, um, down the link list until I find a node that does not have a next node value or that doesn't have a next node. So else I can say current node equals self.head because I have to start at the head node. I can't start at somewhere in the middle because I don't, the link list doesn't know anything other than the head, what, what the head node is. So I have to start at the head node. So the current node is the self.head. And I, I can say while the current node next node so while the current node's next node has a value, I can say, I can reassign the current node's value to the old current node's next node's value. So it's, this is where it's traversing. So while the current node has a next node, it's going to reassign this current node to the current node's next node value. So now the new current node value is this next node. So it's traversing down the linked list. So once it reaches a next node that has a false value or is none, we can just say, hey, the current node next node's value equals the new node. And I can just return the new node or I don't have to return anything. 
or I can just return the head node. So if I were to print this, I'm gonna also print head down here. So I've got my node object. If I do dot value, dot value, uh, wait, hold on. I wonder if I can do dot value. I don't know if I can do that. I might throw an error. Oh, no, it did. Yeah. So current head nodes value is four. I added seven and that value is obviously seven. And I'm just, again, printing the head node. So if I wanted to, which I should, I can say four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, one. So four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, one. And that clear. So when I printed that, it's just printing all these node objects which is this new node. So I don't really even need to do that. <clears throat> but if I wanted to print the head node value, I can clear that. So the head node's value is four, but maybe I wanted to print the next node. So the next node, oh, I'm gonna comment that out. So the next node's value is another node, which if I do, what's the next node's value of the head node? Seven. Seven. Yep, so I can do the head node's next node's value is seven, but now I can keep chaining this together. So next node's, so the head nodes, next nodes, next nodes value. Actually, I'm gonna go back like that. Next node dot value. What's the next nodes, next nodes value? Two. 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 So seven, two, and I can keep chaining this together all the way. Keep going. So if I clear that, so now I get seven, two, eight, six, nine, and then the very last one is one. Great. So that's how you insert into a linked list. Again, there's trade-offs between working with data structures where inserting into a linked list, like so like inserting into a list, I can just insert at end of the index or insert somewhere else in the index. Or if I wanted to access a value, I can just access it by its index. So it's like constant time or uh, um, yeah, whereas like using a leveraging a linked list, yeah, I can store, um, like I might be able to store more in RAM, but if I wanted to find a value, I always have to start at the beginning of the linked list. So maybe what if this linked list was 5,000, had, had a length of 5,000, there's 5,000 nodes in this linked list. If I wanted to find a specific value, I would always have to start at the very, the head node and traverse all the way to the end. Or if I wanted to find the last value in the, in the linked list, I'd have to start at the very beginning and traverse all the way down to the end of the linked list until I get the at last value. So, so it, sounds, it sounds like in the case of arrays, um, arrays are less less efficient when you're adding things 
and linked lists are less efficient when you're searching for things. So what, what would be a case where one would be uh, better than the other? Um, when like memory is constrained maybe, and like you have a massive, um, maybe like you maybe have a massive list or link list and you have to search, not even, not even search, but like just memory allocation. Um, to be perfectly candid, link lists, they don't come in handy that often anymore. You'll, you'll rarely ever see them in like the wild <laughs> in your job, but they are, they are common. They are common data structure um, to know because this is like the first data structure where it starts to get like a little more complicated than like just a stack and queue. Like stack and queue, it's relatively straightforward. Insert, remove, pop, pull, like pop, push, where link list, this is like the first one where it requires nodes and pointers, et cetera. Um, but like you can see like, um, uh, big O of, <clears throat> like you can see like how efficient specific data structures are. Like arrays here, singly linked lists here, um, doubly. And you can see like the different um, big O, how efficient they are for specific operations, access, searching, inserting, deletion, et cetera. So there are, there are trade offs. <clears throat> okay. So we've added the add um, method. What's another method we need for a link list? We have search. What was that? What was the other one? Remove. Like a pointer? Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, let's, we're adding something. Now let's do something to remove one. So def remove self dot data or value. This one is a little bit more difficult to actually write because if I wanted to remove, um, let's actually clear. Oh. What did I just do? So four is the head node and four's next node is seven, seven's next node is two, two's next node is eight, etc. If I wanted to remove, let's say I wanted to remove eight from this link list. So I'd have to traverse all the way from, from the head node, seven to eight. So I, I can remove that, but how do I actually make sure the link list is still intact? So two's next node is eight, but eight's next node is six, but we're trying to remove eight. So essentially we have to change is two's next node to six. So, we're going to have to do some, um, we're essentially going to have to traverse and keep track of the previous node. Once we get to eight, we, we're still going to have to keep track of the previous node because we're going to have to reassign the previous node's next node to six. So here we're going to write current node. Again, we're always going to have to start at the head node. Uh, we're going to have to keep track of the previous node because we're going to have to reassign the previous node's next node to the value, the node that we're trying to remove next node. So previous node equals none. So <clears throat> this one, we can say like, hey, if uh, the current node, so if, for example, the current node value, so if the head node, if the head node's value equals the value we're trying to remove. What did I just do? Oh, if, so if current node, which happens to be the head node. So in this case, if we're removing the head node, 
So if we wanted to remove four, we can just reassign self.head to equal the current node, which is the head nodes, dot next nodes value, which would be then seven. So we removed, we reassigned, reassigned the head node to now seven if, you were, if we were removing four. So if we're doing that, if I went uh, link list dot remove and I wanted to remove four and I wanted to print the link list dot head dot value, uh, I'm just gonna print. Let's keep things separate. So I removed four and now I printing the current node, I'm sorry, the head new head nodes value, which is now seven. So that's what this logic is doing right here. Else, again, now we're gonna have to traverse the, the link list. So I'm gonna say, while the current nodes uh, value does not equal, or is it, is it double equals? I think it's just single equals the value I'm trying to remove, I'm gonna assign the previous node to equal the current node, and then the current node to equal the current node's next node's value, or the next node. And then once I actually find the value I want to remove, I can say, hey, the previous node's next node's value equals the current node's next node value. And then I can just return self.head, just returning the head node. So if I did, if I wanted to remove eight, let's go ahead and So if I removed eight, it's got to traverse four, seven, two, eight, it finds eight. So let's actually look at here. <clears throat> so current node value, initially it's four. Does four equal eight? No. So the previous node is now four and the current node is now seven. Does seven equal eight? Nope, so the previous node is now seven and the current node is now two. Does two equal eight? Nope, so the previous node is now two and the current node is now eight. Does the current node's value eight equal eight? Yes, it does, so it breaks out of that while loop. So the previous node, which was originally two, that new next node's value is eight, next node, which is six. So it makes that link. So if I print that by removing eight, you can see now it should be four, seven, two, six, nine, one. If I removed eight, four, seven, two, six, nine, one. And now that's the link list. questions on remove and add. There's some, sometimes there's other um, things up here like self.length, just in case, instead of having to traverse the entire link list to figure out the length of it, you can just keep a length in here. Um, so here we can do self.length equals, is it plus equals one? So if I wanted to ever just grab the length, length of the link list, I can just return self that length. You need to add something in your remove too. 
Yep. Right. Yeah. So self dot length minus. So if I figure out the length, print length, link, link list dot length. If I run that, uh oh. Int object is not callable. Oh, I wonder if like, that's not it, right? There we go. <clears throat> Initially it's seven. Oh, did I remove that? So initially it's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The length of the linked list is seven. Now, when I removed one item, it's six. Any questions on linked lists? There's a bunch of other data structures. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. To, uh, let's see, with linked lists, like some of the, like the questions might be like, um, like how do you remove duplicates? from a linked list and like, you have to figure out how to do that. So you have to like, like how would you figure out if a linked list has duplicates and then remove just one of the values or like, let's try to remove, or like, I wanna figure out what is the value three from the end of a linked list? Like, okay, that, that seems kind of difficult because you'd have to traverse the linked list all the way to the end and then subtract three. But like, how do you actually do that with a linked list and nodes? And so those are some really interesting challenges to try to solve when you're trying to like deal with linked lists or like, how do you delete the middle node? If you didn't have like a length, if you didn't have this value, uh, like how would you delete just the middle node of a linked list? Um, those are like some interesting uh, problems that will like kind of mess with your brain. Um, <clears throat> some of other interesting problems, like how can you tell if a linked list is a loop or like an infinite linked list where it like four, seven, like for example, what if like four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, one, and then one's next node happens to point to the same eight node and it just kind of gets it stuck in a loop, like an infinite loop between eight, six, nine, one, eight, six, nine, one. So like those are weird problems that you might, um, like how to detect a uh, looping link list. Anyway, 